Okay, I'm going to do a video here today. This is part of the curriculum that I teach in a conceal and carry class in the state of Kentucky. Uh, the curriculum, this is what's been approved by the Department of Criminal Justice training in Kentucky. And uh, uh, some of the slides I uh, found on my own. Some of them I borrowed from another friend of mine that does the class. So I'm just kind of doing this. Uh, hopefully I'll get some good feedback on maybe ways I can improve it. If you're a experienced shooter it might be kind of boring for you but stick around at the end I'll explain why these I've got these marks on my fingers and it might be something that can help you out even if you are experienced if you're a new shooter or anywhere any any gamut I hope you maybe you can learn something from it um, especially if you're a new shooter out there and give me some feedback on ways I can improve uh, what I'm doing here but um, first we're going to start off with the principles of marksmanship and I'm basically going to go over two things today I'm just going to talk about stance and then also grip um, there's basically uh, two types of stances or we could add a third but it's the weaver stance um, basically where your feet you're bladed toward the target more or less and your feet are at a 45 degree angle and then the other one that most people use is the isosceles where you're parallel to the to the target or basically your body is square uh, to the target and your shoulders are square and your your feet are square to the target and then the third that we could throw in there is a one-handed um, grip which I don't usually teach in the class because we always try to use two hands uh, maintain control of the gun with two hands but if you're ever in a situation where one hand was hurt I mean a lot of people will practice uh, you know one-handed shooting with either your strong or your weak hand uh, just depending on what you know what you might want to do for training is as far as being prepared for any situation that might come out there but we'll just stick with these two stances uh, for today and most people will agree the isosceles is, is the most stable stance just because of the way you have your body positioned and that's what most people will uh, gravitate to and stances as well as um, grip are pretty individualized it's going to depend on many things it's going to depend on your just your physical ability it's going to depend on your physical makeup uh, it's going to depend on just what you can do your you know even your right or, or your eye dominance can make a difference in your stance and so it's very individualized toward every person and also your grip is too and not just your grip because everybody's hands are different sizes but also the the weapon that's being used uh, you know could differ from hand size to weapon so it's very individualized and this is just the basic information that I'm giving you so this is an example of the weaver stance as you can see the feet are at a 45 degree angle the uh, strong hand um, arm there it's straight the weak hand is bent and you can see how that how that works out and then here's the overhead view of the weaver stance and you can kind of see the angles there of the body this is another view of the weaver stance there you can see the feet at the more or less a 45 degree angle and this is the isosceles stance and as you can see the body your square you know your feet and your shoulders are square and parallel uh, to the target and then here's the overhead view this is why they call it the isosceles because basically your your arms and your shoulders there form an isosceles triangle here's another view of the isosceles stance where this good gun position the gun is brought up to the eyes arms are good straight good posture and then there's the overview there, the isosceles stance. Okay, what stance is the lady using in the following slide? Note the position of the feet and the shoulders. Okay, well obviously she's using the isosceles stance. In that picture, okay, here's an example of something you don't want to do, which a lot of people I see this uh, leaning back from the hips you know you don't you don't want this you're not able to control the gun there's nothing you want to pr push the gun forward or push the gun to the target you don't want the gun pushing you back or leaning back uh, while you're shooting here's the correct method um, bent slightly forward you know gun on target right up there brought up to the head arms fully extended 
knees flexed out and it says not bent but they can be slightly bent and then your toes are parallel or square you know to your shoulders and to the to the target two hand grip 40% of the pressure should come from your strong hand the one that's holding the weapon your strong hand is your like for me I'm right handed so it's my right hand 40% and then 60% should be from the support hand the other hand so I've got a gun here it's unloaded there's no magazine in here so my right hand is my strong hand that's holding the gun so that's 40% of the pressure my weak hand is going to come up and is going to have 60% of the pressure on the gun and how is that accomplished I just showed you so the two-handed grip there's basically two different ones there's the master grip where the support hand thumb is on top and this is uh, mainly for revolvers and here's a revolver I've got it. it's unloaded so you can see so basically it's like this the support hand thumb is going to be on top of the uh, strong hand and that's the master grip it works real well with revolvers it doesn't work so well with semi-automatics but you can get away with it and then the strong grip or the strong hand grip is the same one I just showed you where um, your strong hand basically your your strong hand thumb is going to be on top your strong hand thumb is going to be on top on that one and that's the preferred uh, method for semi-automatics not really preferred as much if all for uh, revolvers and here's just a way to get the grip first step one you want to hold the gun in your strong hand as high as you can you want to get the back strap of the gun this part right here as high up in the web of your hand as possible as high up in the web of your hand as possible so that's step one step two you want to place the middle of the weak hands index finger which is like right here you basically just put that right up underneath the slide right here that's one way to do it put this right up underneath the slide on the or not underneath the slide but underneath the I'm sorry underneath the trigger guard <laughs> and then you want to wrap after you have got the grip and you got this and you just wrap the hand around wrap the rest of the fingers around like that that's one way to do it another way to do it is you take the palm of your hand and the open part of the gun right here and this part of your palm you just press it in there and then wrap it around and then you're good to go so uh, excellent two hand grip in the following slide identify all the features that make for an excellent grip wrist weapon to head position of hand on back strap support hand placement okay so this is correct you got the gun it's good up here in the web of the hand as high up on the back strap as you can get you've got the thumbs in the correct position going forward your wrist is good it's locked straight and then the support hand is, is uh, coming around gripping the gun done properly wrist straight good weapon to head position which it didn't show that but we're going to assume that good support hand position and then both thumbs are parallel to the line of sight excellent two-handed grip in the following slide identify all the features that make for an excellent grip okay this slide it's um the uh, gun is good it's up here as high it's the back straps in the web of the hand uh, support hand is okay um, the thumbs though I, I'm not really sure what he's doing here I'm kind of uh, this is why I don't this is I wouldn't even call this the master grip I'm not really sure what his thumbs are doing but what you can do and even if you do a, even if you do a correct uh, master grip you know on a, on a semi-auto a lot of times what you can do is you can hit the magazine release you know if you get your thumbs down here like this you can hit the magazine release by accident it's uh, it's really easy to do so this is probably not a, the preferred um, a grip okay what's wrong with this grip it, it's pretty obvious the gun is way high in the hand it needs to be brought down this uh, back strap right here needs to be welded to this uh, web of the hand here okay now this is what we call teacupping when you're doing this you're not holding the gun with both hands you're basically just resting 
the butt of the gun in your weak hand. This is, uh, you know, you're not. This is not controlling the weapon with both hands. And then uh, you want to be careful of what they call slide bite. And uh, you know, I've seen people when they do, when, you know, when they try to grip the gun, they'll do this. You know, this. You, if your thumb is up here, if your weak hand thumb is is right here behind the back strap, it's not good. You're going to have problems. And I've also, to a lesser degree, seen people do this with their hand, with their support hand, wrap it around their wrists like this. There again, you've only got one hand, one hand on the gun. So that's not preferred. Uh, so here we go. Wrong, uh, you know, the strong hand is too low. You can see so much of the back strap right here. And then this is wrong because look at the weak hand. This is basically, like I said, the teacupping. You're just, you're holding the bottom of the gun. You're supporting it. You're not really holding it. Okay, now on the revolvers. Here's an excellent example of the master grip that I showed you earlier. Here's the revolver. It's unloaded. As you can see, the master grip where you have your weak hand thumb over your strong hand, and that's the preferred uh, method for a revolver. And then, uh, as we went on before, you know, this is uh, the. I don't even know, I guess you could call this a strong hand grip, but the way his thumb is right here, why is this a bad idea? Most people are going to know, yeah, ouch, it's not good. There's gases that come out of the revolver right here between the cylinder and the forcing cone, and a lot of times you don't notice it or see it when you're shooting, but if you have your hand or fingers anywhere in that area, it's, it's your, yeah, it's not going to be good for you. You're going to, it's going to leave a mark, so, or more. <laughs> Okay, what's wrong here? Uh, well, I'll go ahead and tell you a couple things. See this back strap right here? He doesn't have his hand up on the gun. When you do that, you're doing several things. Not only are you controlling, you have better control of the gun, but you can also mitigate mitigate recoil better. You can control the backward motion of the gun and the you know recoil. You control it a lot better. The more your hand is in line with the barrel, the, the better you're going to be able to control recoil. And uh, the other thing is he's uh, teacupping it there with his other hand, so that's not good. There's... And so here's all the things we went over, teacupping, cross thumbs, and then, of course, there's the correct grip down here at the bottom. And a uh, warning for a two-handed semi-automatic grip. Uh, do not drop or loosen the magazine by accidentally pressing the magazine release button with either hand and I've already talked about that and then you want to keep your hand out of the rear or travel the slide also you know with the you know a lot of people you if if you keep your thumb up here on this part of the slide you can actually cause jams and malfunctions from the gun you want to try to keep it you know keep it away from the slide as you know not pressed up against the slide you can keep it up here a little bit but I like to keep it on the side of the frame right there so that way you know you're not you're not impeding the movement of the slide okay how can you use a sharpie to check your grip uh, to make sure it's consistent consistent grip is really important you know I used to work with a lot of guys that play golf and different things and they were always you know practicing their grip practicing their golf grip you know just over and over just all the time and what you want is you, you want a number one you want a, a safe grip but you want a consistent grip every time you pick the weapon up any you know any weapon you want to make sure that you have that you can just pick it up and you have the grip it's consistent it's the same every time that's just going to make you a better shooter it's just going to be better for you in the long run so what you can do is and this is why i've got the marks on my hand and i did them myself so it's best to have somebody help you to do this okay the back strap of your hand of your strong hand you want to put a V or in my case I put an arrow right there right in the middle and then you want to mark your thumb to thumb mark and then you want to mark your support hand fingertips on your strong hand and I'll show you what that looks like here we go we got a clear weapon okay so my strong hand is right here the arrow is right in the middle you know if I had somebody to help me they could probably do it better but you want the arrow right in the very middle of uh, of your hand or your back strap of your hand your web of your hand I mean the back strap of the gun and then you take your support hand wrap it around and then what you want to do is let's see see I've got a mark right there where that thumb lines up so you can check that mark and then I've got a mark over here 
on my on my strong hand to where my fingers uh, and you want to mark you could actually mark each finger is the best way to do it so that way the gun's clear you know anytime you pick up a gun just pick it up and set it down pick it up and set it down pick it up and set it down and you can you can just get your grip you know check your grip every time and that way you can just if you do that and you practice it and practice it you can just get a consistent grip and it just comes second nature to you you know you pick the gun up and you automatically without even thinking you're 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 in your good grip you're in your good grip so anyways hopefully this wasn't too boring hopefully somebody maybe learned something uh, shoot me some comments and as always thanks for watching take care